Is it on? Hi, Pillow GIs. <clears throat> I fell asleep and I just woke up now. It's 11.35 p.m. Um, you know, <clears throat> I had three phones, you know, in a bag. You know, one didn't have a SIM card. And, um, you know, I qualified for an upgrade and they would give me another phone. So I had that phone in there. And this one I'm using right now is just a cheapy, you know, something because my other one wasn't working. And now, you know, the other one, <laughs> you know, it, start, it had started working. So I put all three of them into a bag. You know, it takes a lot for me to get ready. I was going to go and um, get that upgraded so they give me a new SIM, you know. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I take out all my trash because I have to put my trash in little bags, you know, little grocery bags, and put it, like, in this old lady cart and take it down and put it in one by one. So it was filled up. And I took that down, and I come back up here, and the phone is not in there. Well, it's a real cheap phone, but that's not the point. And um, the phone's not in the bag. Okay, I didn't stash the phone or anything. I barely use it, but I do use it, and I do need it for emergencies and stuff. And me, I'm not the type of person, if I know it was somewhere, you know, I'm not going to look around and tear everything apart f to look for it. Because that's not me. I used to do that. And I used to have bad anxiety and bad OCD, really bad. So, you know, I've learned to change up throughout the years after this accident. You know, my honey poop used to hide things. And if I didn't rip up the place looking for them and find it, eventually it would disappear. But, um, yeah, I learned not to look for it. And then that makes you get stressed out. You know, uh, if something turns up gone and you need it, you know, and so you're sitting there stressing. And that's what she used to do to me. Yeah. Um, but I don't do that no more. You know, if I forget where something, where I put something, because I was in a hurry or I was, like, something was in my head, because we all do that, then I just relax and not think of it. And it comes to me. But I didn't stash this. I was ready to go. The, the phones were charged up. They were in a bag. So until I find it, I'm not going to be do doing too much talking in here. You get me? At all. Because <clears throat> you know how things work. But it's 11.35. Well, now it's probably almost 12 a.m. But, um, you know, because of these gang stalkers and stuff, and I can always hear them, you know, Technically, if you cover up your window and your door is shut, technically, no matter how unprivate it is, it's private. You get me? So, yeah, you know, I have a blanket over the wall. and Not the wall. The wall. I should have blankets over all these walls. There's too many holes in them. Um, but, no, I have a blanket over the, what do you call it, window. And, you know, my door's shut, but, you know. So, technically, I do have privacy. Yeah, I got that little air purifier running. But, yeah, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of talking. Because, you know, I talk to myself. I pray out loud. Though they probably doesn't know it's prayers. Doesn't know my grammar. And um, I talk to the cat. The cat's upset with me. Because, um, my cat, <laughs> you know, I used to get him the big bags of cat food, you know, to save money. And he would eat it for 
probably a week and be sick of it. And he'd just sit up on the counter and look at me after I filled up his bowl like, Mom, are you going to feed me? And it's full. So I've learned to get the, the smaller bags of cat food. And he still gets sick of them. You know. But I picked this place up. You know, it's not perfect. It's never going to look tidy because look at what I'm living in. You know, you guys have seen pictures of the hallway and the stairway. and You know, I thought it was only my apartment because I've lived here 16 years. No, it's the whole place. You know, you can only paint over stuff so much in the hallway and on the stairs and stuff. But if there's mold and there's dirt coming from up on the in the basement or, you know, in that room down there under the stairs or in the laundry mat and it's coming up, it's going to come up. But, yeah, they stopped even paying attention to that for years. I mean, this place hasn't had a good scrubbing. I'm not talking about my apartment because, damn, there's not much you can do with all these holes in the wall and the walls are like... They're not yellow from smoke. They're orange. They're orange. You know, the same color of the residue of the to in the toilet. You know, and I'd be pissing out some of that radiation. You know, so sometimes the residue in the toilet is all, like, bright orange. Sometimes not. But, yeah, I washed some of these walls. Got some of that orange off. Smoke, when smoke is saturated into the walls, it's like a greasy feeling, you know, and it doesn't turn the walls orange. You know, I got my first apartment when I was 14. You know, I had a raid in there, but I still had my first apartment when I was 14. And no walls turn orange. And that's from poison. And because there's no fucking air circulating in there. And nothing can get out, really. You know, if you've been telling them for years, I mean, I've died here <laughs> because of the lack of air. Uh, when I was, <clears throat> yeah, when I was 363 pounds, I'd faint. When it would get hot in here, I'd faint. And every time I hit that ground, you know, I'd come to, and something would be broken because I'd be so big. You know, and I found some of the papers uh, last week or something. I found some of the papers where I documented it with mental health, you know. And um, also me being put into the medical coma. You know, I called mental health because back then I used to take medication. Yeah, and they called the, the hospital you know, and verified it, because back then you could do that. Now they don't tell you if a person's in there or what a person's going through. But, yeah, so I got the paper from my mental health files that are really old. Well, yeah, you know, a couple things because of lack of air in here. You know, because they lose medical files and stuff, so, you know, if I have a psych, I make sure that you know, I tell them. So they document stuff. You get me? So it's always there. So if you need to subpoena it into court, it's there. You get me? Yeah. But apparently, you know, with all these gang stalkers and stuff and these tactics and all the shit that they do to me, you know, I just got a site not too long ago. So apparently with all this shit happening to me, there's nothing wrong with me, and I don't need mental health help. I need a neurologist because there was a um because my brain don't connect right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I got it documented that you know I'm perfectly mentally healthy. <laughs> it's in my file. You know, with all this crap that they do. And the gang stalking and the torture and the stuff I've told him, 
There's nothing wrong with me mentally. I need a neurologist. So I'm assuming a neurologist must be a brain doctor because um, my brain doesn't correct, connect right sometimes and I can't understand certain things that I should be able to. <laughs> you know, they tell you not to tell your psych because they'll just try to deem you crazy and deem you mentally unstable. But I've told my psych, the last two psychs, and one I had for many years. And both of them, they know about this type of shit. I mean, hell. My last psych, the one that I had for years before like, this accident, he, you know, I asked him, because somebody I know and used to love, you know, forgot a lot of things. And a lot of things were combobbled. And they forgot things that were like really important they couldn't remember. Super important. And I just couldn't believe that they could not remember certain things. Or remember them tripped out. So I had asked my psych, you know, this and this and this. How could a person forget that? And he said certain people forget the most important things after years of, you know, use. And um, I couldn't understand it. And he told me I had a patient. And he didn't know he was married. He forgot he was married with kids. I said, are you serious? So he went to the computer and, and printed me out some stuff. You know. You know, another time I came to him because, you know, we were talking about acid. And I've done it like five times and I enjoyed it. I just, you know, it was back then when I didn't laugh and smile. And I laughed my ass off. You know, and, um, you know, I was young. But, um, yeah, I had been thinking about doing it. This was years ago. And I talked to him and stuff, and boom, he went to the computer and printed me out, you know, like effects and stuff. And um, I read that paper back when I had light. And, you know, it was about, you know, the government using LSD with, um, for ex health experiments and shit. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff you know, came from my psych, you know, because he knows about, well, not this one, but he knows about stuff like that. So, you know, if you trust your psych, you know, it doesn't matter whether he thinks you're nuts or not. Take a deep breath and make sure you're past the crazy stage and make sure you're past the angry stage and make sure you don't sound like a nut and rant on because I tend to do that when when I feel anxious. <laughs> you know, my best friend knows. He told me, go to the SSI and don't start rambling on and stuff. And because when you get nervous, you tend to ramble and ramble and ramble and go in circles and nobody can understand you. So take a deep breath. They're there to help you. You know, and that helped a lot. Because, you know, when I got emotions and stuff, I, I tend to like, <laughs> but I've done a lot better throughout the past couple of years doing that. I mean, I still do it, but not like I used to. Because I know, you know, before I didn't know, and it bugged me a lot, and I'd ramble. And ramble on one thing. There's so many other things to ramble about. <laughs> you know, but the more, the more I talk, they're really listening. You know, they take your words literally. You know, even though, you know, sometimes you speak out loud 
and you talk to yourself. Because sometimes hearing you say things, yourself say things out loud, you can actually hear them. And they're not a good idea. Or that's not the way to handle something. Or you need to chill and just move on. So when you hear your words out loud, even if you're talking to your cat, sometimes you just, you're able to actually hear them where you didn't hear them before rambling around inside your head. And you take a step back and you're able to say, oh no, 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 what the hell is the matter with you, Garcia? <laughs> so they help to hear your words out loud. But with these gang stalkers pondering on our every word, you know, and I do the head trips too sometimes. And you know, you know how they take something and they run with it? <clears throat> they think it's your weakness? Try throwing stuff out there and making it a problem in your head. Feeling it. And they, yeah, they run with it. And it's not even, it's not even existent. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, my cat is mad at me because I don't know what I did with the food. There's two bags of food, not big bags, because I can't find big bags no more. He gets tired of them. And um, I don't know where I put them. But I'm not going to rip this place apart and look for them. Just like the phone. I'm just going to shut up and take myself off those accounts. But, um... And me, I was so hungry last night. Couldn't go to the store because that's where I was going to have it upgraded. And I was so hungry last night, and I ate macaroni and cheese. You know, and I have to come all the way to the refrigerator and mix it up, and it's across the room. I mean, not like this is a big-ass room, but, you know, when I'm in pain and, you know, I have that oven that they make me keep, you know, it's, that's what that is is that oven that they will not take out of here. And that oven brings radiation, whether it's plugged in or not. You know, and that acts as a big, yeah. Well, anyways, I couldn't move that yesterday. You know, an oven's an oven. It's slideable. Come on. <laughs> but when these, you know, like I told you about my bed, it's easy, easy peasy slide. Yeah, but it sticks to the floor. It's like it's magneted down, magnetic, magneted down. Because I told you, I went to go push that bed, and it would not move. And I put my, my freaking butt on it, and I put all my weight onto it, and it scratched. Freaking, it moved slowly and scratched inside the floor. So tell me, that's, that's not the, you know, pulling it and keeping it there because my refrigerator was used to do that too and it was slideable and easy peasy